I'm struggling with this project. I'm using GPT-5. I've completed the PRD. So there's a new paper from ChatGPT called How People Use ChatGPT. It came out yesterday and it's by a bunch of people at OpenAI, Duke University and Harvard University. Some of them are at both places and it is a paper about the actual usage patterns so we can see how people in general are using ChatGPT, which is really cool. So despite the rapid adoption of LLM chatbots, I'm going to blow that up, little is known about how they are actually used. We document the growth of ChatGPT's consumer product from its launch in November 2022 through July 2025 when it had been adopted by around 10% of the world's adult population. Whew. Early adopters were disproportionately male, yes, but the gender gap has narrowed dramatically. Good. And we find higher growth rates in lower income countries. Makes sense because higher income countries picked it up first and then it's been spreading from there. Using a privacy preserving automated pipeline, we classify usage patterns within a representative sample of GPT conversations. We find steady growth in work related messages, but even faster growth in non work related messages, which have grown from 53% to more than 70% of all usage. Wow. Okay, so 70% of ChatGPT usage is now personal, not professional. That's really interesting. Uh, that's a bit worrying for Google too, because Google is how we used to find information and how we used to navigate the internet. That 70% of usage of ChatGPT and the growth to 10% of the world's population means concerning things for ChatGPT. Sorry for Google. I'm actually going to talk about Google in a minute though, so I'll leave that for now. Work usage is more common for educated users and highly professional Highly paid professional occupations makes sense, I guess. We classify messages by conversation topic and find that practical guidance, seeking information and writing are the most common topics that collectively account for nearly 80% of conversation. Writing dominates work-related tasks, fair enough. Highlighting ch chatbot's unique ability to generate digital outputs compared to traditional... coffee. Compared to traditional search engines. They are large language models, so their ability to write is what they're made for, initially at least. Computer programming and self-expression both represent relatively small shares of use. Overall, we find that ChatGPT provides economic value through decision support, awesome, which is especially important in knowledge-intensive jobs. So go ahead and you can read the paper yourself. It is how people use ChatGPT. It's 63 pages. I'm not going to run it through it all now. What I have done, though, because I'm efficient, lazy, both, is run it through ChatGPT to ask, hey, what are the big headline numbers? What are the big findings of this paper? So a couple of things here. Scale of adoption. By July 2025, GPT had 700 million weekly active users, which is about 7% of the world's population. So that 700 million number we've always used as a rule of thumb. And that looks like it's been confirmed by this study. And... Users are sending 2.6 billion daily messages. So around 30,000 messages per second. So this would be really useful for people who are trying to work out the climate impact of ChatGPT and other AIs, because now they have a solid figure, which is really useful for that kind of work. So work versus non-work. So back early on in mid-2024, which seems like a, an age ago, it was 53% non-work, 47% work. So roughly equal. By mid-2025, so a couple of months ago, it was 73% non-work and 27% work. So it switched from 50-50, half, to 75%, 25%, basically. So people are realizing that they can use it more extensively in every area of their life. And this kind of aligns with what I say when people say, how do I start using AI? I just say, just download ChatGPT and start playing around with it and see what you can use it for in your daily life. And I think people are coming to this realization that you can basically use it to help with anything. And it is a general purpose technology that can be applied all the way across your life. So both grew. So adoption is up, but non-work has grown much, much faster. So practical use cases, 29% are using it for tutoring, how to advice and creative ideation. That's awesome. Seeking information is actually lower is only 25%, so using it as a Google replacement is lower than practical guidance. So that's good to see because using it just as a Google replacement is a 
it's not a very exciting use of AI. It's one of the first uses that people start with, but then they realize, oh, actually, I can use this. I can have a discussion with this. I can not just retrieve information, but query that information and work with the AI to better deepen my understanding. So more and more people are doing that, which is cool. 25% are using it for writing. So emails, documents, and editing. That is not particularly not particularly surprising. And those are the three big ones. So practical guidance, seeking information, and writing. And coding is relatively small. It's only 4.2%. So the big thing, I think the really cool one, is that closing, where is it, of the gender gap. So the demographics here. So early users were 80% male, and now usage is near parity or slightly female leaning so it's about 50 50 but with a slight skew towards females using it more than men which is a huge change compared to where we were a couple of years ago when it was just dudes basically it's also a young skew 50 percent of adult messages come from under 26s nice to know that i'm not young <laughs> by quite a margin <laughs> and then global spread the fastest growth has been in low and middle income countries that's not that surprising because we had early growth in the, the higher income countries. So they were already at a relatively high level. And now the lower and middle income countries are picking it up as well, which is fantastic because it has the potential to really democratize wealth. We could go two very different directions with AI. It could be a way for the rich to concentrate their wealth even more. And that's currently the path we're taking with about five to 10 billionaires running the whole show or if we make sure that everybody on earth is educated about how to use this and how we can use it to build businesses and make money, which is my mission, this is what I'm trying to help people do, then we could use it to democratize and spread wealth instead of concentrating it. It could go two very different ways, though, unfortunately. And then education, more educated, high-paid professionals use ChatGPT for work and they use it more for asking, which is decision support rather than just doing Cool. So it's going to have a look at the paper. Again, it's called How People Use ChatGPT. I'm sure if you Google it, it will pop up or you can ask ChatGPT because that's what we do nowadays, apparently. But I think there's a couple of interesting trends there. The fact that it is not just white men and it used to just be white dudes who are using this and now it is much more evenly gender balanced, in fact, with a female skew. And it's also in mid and lower income countries as well. So we are seeing a much larger group of humanity using AI, which is, for me, I find very exciting.